Magandang araw ulit sa inyong lahat. At ngayon, itatakil naman natin ang tungkol sa lipids. Natakil na natin yung about sa carbohydrate at pati na rin sa protein. Ngayon, pupunta tayo sa lipid. So, ang lipids ay isang heterogeneous class of naturally occurring organic compounds na naklasify na magkakasama based sa kanilang common solubility properties. Yung common solubility properties include insoluble sa tubig pero soluble sa organic solvents like diethyl ether, chloroform, methylene chloride, and acetone. Ang lipids din ay amphiphatic, meaning meron siyang polar at non-polar groups in nature. So now, pag-uusapan natin ang open chain forms at cyclic forms ng lipids. Ang open chain forms ng lipids include fatty acids, triacylglycerols, phingolipids, at phosphoacylglycerols. While yung cyclic forms naman natin include cholesterol, steroid hormones, at bile acids. So, pupunta tayo sa properties and functions ng lipids. Ang lipids have greater structural variety than proteins, nucleic acids, at carbohydrates. Largely hydrophobic din ang ating lipids, meaning takot sila sa tubig. At yung biological functions ng ating lipids include energy stores, nagpo-form din sila ng lipid bilayer na essential sa ating mga cellular membranes, at kasali din sila sa maraming intra- and intercellular signaling pathways sa ating katawan. Let's talk about lipids as energy stores. So yung fat and oil ay isang stored form of energy. Isa rin silang fatty acid derivative. So yung fats ay nagmumula sa animals at rich sila sa saturated fatty acids at may higher melting point sila. While yung oils naman natin ay nagmula sa vegetables at rich naman sila sa unsaturated fatty acids with lower melting point. So now, let's talk about fatty acids. Yung fatty acids natin ay hydrocarbon chain na may carboxylic acid at one end. Yung carboxylic acid natin at one end is yung may double bond O na nakakabit sa ating C. Yung, like in the illustration, meron tayong COO dun sa illustration. Unbranched chain carboxylic acid din sila na most commonly comprised of 12 to 20 carbons. Derived sila from hydrolysis ng animal fats, vegetable oils, or ng phosphodiacylglycerols ng biological membrane. So yung double bonds in fatty acids, usually meron silang cis configuration. Yung most naturally occurring fatty acid natin ay merong even number ng carbon atoms. Like yung nasa right side na ating illustration where merong double bond and naka-highlight in red, yun yung ating cis configuration. Yung chain length ng ating fatty acid ay nag affect ng physical and chemical properties, physiological functions, and yung solubility nila in water. As well as yung number ng double bonds nila ay nakaka-affect rin sa physical nature ng fatty acid. So, masasabi natin saturated ang ating fatty acid kapag nagkakontain ng single bond carbon. So, yung examples natin na typical na naturally nag-occur ay lauric acid, myristic acid, palmitic, steric, arachidic acid. While yung unsaturated fatty acid naman natin ay yung naglalaman ng double bonded na carbon. Meron silang lower melting points than saturated counterpart. So, pag mas mataas yung degree ng unsaturation or mas marami siyang double bond, mas mababa yung melting point niya. Sa ating fatty acids, yung saturated fatty acid natin is solid at room temperature while yung monounsaturated fatty acid natin ay thick liquids or soft solid. Sila yung mga fatty acid na nagkakontain ng single bond na 
carbons. Well, yung polyunsaturated naman natin is mag appear siya as liquid. So, ano yung benefits ng ating polyunsaturated fatty acid? Yung alpha-linolic acid natin ay isang essential fatty acid. So, makukuha natin siya from diet and precursor siya na ating EPA or ng eicosapentaenoic acid and ng ating DHA. So, yung imbalance natin sa ating omega-3 at omega-6 sa ating diet ay nagpapataas ng risk natin sa cardiovascular diseases. Like, for example, yung Eskimo tribes, meron silang very little heart disease na nadadiagnose sa kanila. Kahit na yung mga tao dito sa mga Eskimo tribes ay kumakain ng high-fat diets and may high levels ng blood cholesterol. Bakit? Kasi kapag ina- inanalyze natin yung diet nila, meron silang mga kinakain na certain highly unsaturated fatty acids na nahahanap sa oils ng mga isda at ng mga diving mammals. So, one class ng mga fatty acid na katulad nito ay tinatawag na omega-3, which would include an example is ito nga ating ecosapentenoic acid. So, yung omega-3 fatty acid natin ay nag inhibit ng formation ng mga certain prostaglandins and yung thromboxin A natin. So, yung thromboxin is released ng mga ruptured arteries na nagkakos sa mga platelets na mag-plump or magbuo-buo sa isang immediate area and mag-increase ng size ng blood clot or pamumuong ng dugo. So, any dis- disruption sa thromboxin synthesis natin ay magre-result sa lower tendency na magkaroon ng blood clot and thus lower potential para sa artery damage. So, in talks about saturated fatty acids, meron tayong consumption guidelines regarding this. So, yung saturated fatty acid intake natin ay positively related sa mga risk ng cardiovascular diseases. So, yung dietary guidelines natin would include yung mga saturated fatty acid natin ay mag-constitute ng hindi lalagpas sa 10% ng total ng kilocalories. While yung mga saturated and unsaturated naman na fats sa ating food lipids ay masasabi nating magto-turn rancid or kapangit uh, yung itsura kapag na-expose sa hangin for long periods of time, which contains oxygen, due to oxidative cleavage at double bond. So now, we'll go to eicosanoids. Yung mga eicosanoids natin ay lipid mediators of inflammation at gawa sila sa arachidonic acid and sa EPA natin kanina, which is eicosapentenoic acid. Kasama rito yung prostaglandin, thromboxanes, at leukotrienes natin. nag assist sila at nag-regulate sila ng immune and cardiovascular systems natin and nag act sila as chemical messengers. So, the illustration on the right shows kung ano yung structure ng ating eicosanoid. So, saan natin masasource yung essential fatty acids natin? Yung linolenic acid natin, nakukuha natin sa nuts and seeds. While yung linolenic acid natin mula sa oils, ng soybean, ng safflower, corn, or ng flaxseed. While yung longer chain fatty acid sources natin like ecosapentenoic acid and DHA is from fatty fish and seafood. While yung arachidonic acid natin is from different plant and animal food. So now we'll go to triacylglycerols or we can call them triglycerides. Yung triglycerides natin ay esters of glycerol na merong tatlong fatty acid. Yung natural soaps are napeprepare by boiling triglycerides or yung animal fats or vegetable oils with sodium hydroxide sa isang reaction na tinatawag nating saponification. Sa Latin, yung sapo means soap. That's why it's called saponification. And yung soaps natin ay nag form ng water-insoluble salts kapag ginamit natin in water containing calcium 2, magnesium 2, and 
Fe3 ions, which is hard water. At ang tawag nga sa process na ito ay saponification. Nag-act sila as catalysts in reaction with acids or bases. So, yung paggawa natin ng soap ay mula sa lipid. Mula animal fat or vegetable oil. So, yung mga sabon natin gawa sa mga oil. While yung esterification ng glycerol and fatty acids ay nagre-result sa triacylglycerols or triglycerides at fat. Yung functions nito ay mag-provide ng essential fatty acids for bodily functions, for energy production, insulation, and protection. So, about lipids pa rin, we have here our waxes. Ang mga waxes natin ay energy stores and water repellent. So, yung mga ito ay ginagamit as water repellent sa skin, sa hair, sa feathers. While yung mga plants naman, ginagamit sila to prevent excessive water loss and also defense against parasites. So, yung biological waxes natin ay esters of long-chain fatty acids with long-chain alcohols. While yung next natin is ang terpenes. Yung lipid na to ay commonly nag-occur sa oils na nagbibigay sa mga halaman ng kanilang amoy or ng kanilang fragrance. Next natin would be our lipid-soluble vitamins. So, nasa table, nakalagay ang ating lipid-soluble vitamins like vitamin A. And ang function niya ay mag-serve as the site of primary photochemical reaction in vision. While yung vitamin B yung nag-regulate ng calcium and phosphorus metabolism. Yung vitamin E naman nag-serve as antioxidant na necessary for reproduction in rats and also may be necessary for reproduction in humans. While yung vitamin K has a regulatory function sa pag-clot ng ating blood. We'll go to vitamin A. Yung vitamin A natin ay nag-furnish ng visual pigment ng vertebrate eye and also regulator ng gene expression during epithelial cell growth. While yung vitamin D is a precursor to a hormone that regulates calcium and phosphorus metabolism. Then, yung vitamin E natin is antioxidant. It's a strong free radical scavenger and protects unsaturated fatty acid. Then, yung vitamin K natin na necessary for the carboxylation of glucose residue sa mga certain proteins like prothrombin or yung factor 7, factor 9, and factor 10. Essential din siya sa blood clotting process. Next natin ay steroids. Ang steroids are group of lipids na merong fused ring structure of tatlong six-membered rings at isang five-membered ring like yung nasa illustration natin. Meron tayo dito tatlong six-membered rings and tayong tatlong hexagon. One, two, three. And isang five-member. Meron tayong pentagon sa gilid ng isang hexagon natin. So, yung cholesterol is uh, one of the most common steroid or most common steroid siya. Component siya ng animal cell plus na membrane and yung smaller amounts ng cholesterol ay nahahanap sa membranes ng intracellular organelles. So, yun. Information. Additional information. Ang cholesterol ay isang steroid. And yung progesterone natin, yung nagkocontrol ng menstrual cycle and pregnancy, sa rin siyang steroid. While yung glucocorticoid naman, like for example, cortisol, yung nagpa-participate sa pag-control ng carbohydrate, protein, and lipid metabolism ay isa ring steroid. While yung mineralocorticoids naman, like aldosterone, na involved sa regulation ng sodium, potassium, and chlorine balances sa tissue. Ito yung nag increase ng capacity ng ating kidney para mag-absorb ng sodium, chlorine, at tubig from the glomerular filtrate sa ating kidney tubules ay isa rin steroid. So, hindi lang gamot ang ating steroid. May steroids din tayo sa katawan. 
And lastly, we have our bile acids. These are detergents secreted by gallbladder na tumutulong mag-solubilize ng lipid sa ating diet. Like colic acid, glycocolic acid, torocolic acid. We also have our kinodeoxycolic acid, glycocolic acid at torocolic acid. These are all bile acids. 